Hey everyone, this is Jaxi, and today we are going to get excited about history with Decisive Battles, Battles in Italy. This is by the Strategic Studies Group, and they are the awesome people who made Core Sun Pocket. This one is 2005, and we are going to jump right into the action. This is Operation Husky. We are the Allies, and we are invading Sicily. And so right here you can see that you start off with navies and they are stuck in certain naval lanes. But if you look by clicking on a naval unit, you can bombard strong points. And that's one of the first things we want to do to set up for our invasion. And right here, one of the mechanics is that Italian coastal units and some of the Italian... Um, more demoralized units will surrender with a 70% chance. And so right there, we launch an attack with our airborne units to try and knock them out. And it is successful. So that's a really good start. You need to use your naval and airborne units to kill as many Italian units as possible because one of the mechanics in this game is beach landings can be contested. And I'll, I'll show that off a little bit more when we actually do beach landings. You'll notice that as I'm pawing around, I'm taking a look at the bottom. There, Everything in this game is based off kind of board game mechanics. So you get a table of results for combat. And it'll show you like one attacker um, counter. Everything's based on counters. Like each unit has usually between two and four steps. And it'll tell you how many steps each side could lose, if that is the roll, and then if the defender retreats or not. When you lose steps, they will either be gone permanently and you need to spend... Um, oh, right there, we don't get the surrender, but you see it was D1R, so the defenders lost one step and they retreated. But... If you, if you lose a step, sometimes they will come back naturally through reinforcements, and sometimes you have to spend um, certain units, and it's a finite resource, you only get certain um, numbers of replacements every turn, and you have to decide how you funnel those around. So right there I'm looking, uh, the Italian units start off being surprised, so they won't react immediately, it gives you a little bit of a chance to do something. And now here, I have a chance to land, and you'll see that um, single die icon, that means it's a contested landing, and I could take damage, and that's how many... Um, in that case, a die, but how many dice will be rolled to decide to take damage. I'm going to land with my combat engineers first. Usually having them and rangers and marines go first is the best option so that your main infantry units don't have to be on such a contested beach. And right there, I'm going to attack from two sides. And without taking any damage, I get a surrender, which is nice because now Lakata is going to be less contested. It basically represents that I'm out of range of a lot of the enemy artillery and won't have to worry. So right there, combat engineers, they could take damage, but I'm getting really lucky here in my results. I'm nervous because one of the six chances has, and now two out of the six, has two um, combat steps lost. And I really don't want to take that. Like, I need to knock those units out so my landings aren't as contested. But taking two out of three steps, if the enemy does counterattack once they activate, it would kill that unit. One of the ways you get victory points is taking objectives. The other is killing units, though. And my rangers, they land pretty well. Um, they do better in the contested landings. Now I can attack and get a surrender, which is lovely and push up. One of the cool mechanics with this and Course on Pocket and the other Decisive Battle series are the front lines actually being represented, and it helps with like supply and units being in contact with each other. Real cool. It looks like there's a lot going on in this game, but most of these mechanics really... And good old rangers land right next to the enemy. It's not even contested. Let's see what I get here. Surrender, beautiful. Um, 
it looks really complicated, but really the most complicated thing here is the beach landings and you just click on a portion of beach wherever you want to land and then you click the anchor icon and if it's not even a contested landing the unit just lands and it's fine the airborne they landed randomly and there's a nice little icon telling you where their supplies came in if you right click on cities it'll tell you when reinforcements are scheduled it's a busy interface, and it doesn't look super modern, but actually playing the game makes a lot of sense, and it will always tell you here are the six results you could get in combat, and a little later on, I can show you the combat advisor. I don't use it a whole lot, but combat advisor will tell you here are the best attacks you can do, and with a little artillery support, I hope I can get a surrender. Because, unfortunately, the Ranger Battalion and the Engineer Combat, there we go. Uh, if you got really unlucky and you got a 2 or 3 attacker uh, result, that could kill um, the Rangers, and I didn't want to do that. But the, the combat advisor will tell you, like, here's how you can get 8 to 1 or 9 to 1 or 10 to 1 odds. And if you get 10 to 1 odds or 10 plus to 1, you can get overrun rules and just decimate the enemy. Right there, I'm I'm leaving the big red one there. It is a contested landing. I don't know if I want to actually click it yet. Let's see what else I can do. I mean, it would be nice because I could take Skogliti, and I do. And if you see there, it was a contested landing, and they took a step of damage. But the little red skull with a three next to it means... They will get that step back in three turns, unless I take more casualties. So, you know, it's kind of a necessary evil. I really wanted Skogliti. I I'm trying to be fast. In this game, like, the allies will eventually overwhelm the Axis, but I found in previous campaigns that the timeline really is pretty harsh and... Because victory points for some of the objectives, especially like um, Parma and Syracuse and uh, the the ending ones, they really accrue every single turn. And if you don't take them early enough, the Axis can just get that edge where even if you're killing a lot of units, it's not going to be good enough. Now here, I'm trying to get my airborne to attack on three sides. I'm doing this manually. The one parachute regiment, they already took a step of damage just from landing. It is random. Sometimes you'll even lose uh, different chits. And, oh, good attack. I'm trying to use my gunboats and my destroyers for destroying these little strong points. Those are just the little infantry guys there you can see. But, um, yeah, airborne, sometimes you'll lose the entire chit, and it kind of sucks because a lot of those allied airborne units will become the 82nd a little later. And right there, destroyers and my gunboats taking on everything useful because I want to leave some of the ships since they can be used for artillery support in attacks. My cruiser there is in range of Syracuse, and now there are no units in Syracuse. And I think I will take my first air landing. I don't get any reinforcements there for six turns, so I have time to leave it unattended. But I want to capture it. I want to have it. And this British landing could be dicey. I have these commandos, and even the commandos would take a contested landing landing close to the enemy but i think again i'm gonna have the commandos and the marines be the first then i can move the regular infantry in but a lot of these beaches are in range of italian infantry and i'm gonna do what i can like right there with, with two dice showing even royal marines there is a chance it would just destroy the unit that the landing is that contested so i gotta pull back there i'll be content to take pacino um, I do get an armored brigade in two turns, so I do have to take Pizzallo and Pacino sooner rather than later. If you don't, um, it will either shunt the unit somewhere else, or I think in some cases you just don't get the unit. I do risk the contested landing there, and 
I get it without any sort of damage. So we are getting really lucky. This is a good landing. This is like way better than allied planners could have hoped for. Doesn't mean the campaign will go well, but it's nice when the landing starts off well because you don't have a bunch of wounded units limping in from the get-go. And I'm going to be scared with my Canadians. I'm going to keep them back. So the Marines are going to do the hard work. They're going to start pushing up. But the Canadians, I'm going to have them land in safety. I'm going to have basically anything. Like right there, that infantry brigade, if it landed where I wanted to and captured that bridge, they would have to roll three dice to see how contested their landing was. So I'm going to try to use these commandos. I really just got to take the risk and clear Avola. And no casualties there. I'm going to attack from the not bridge side. And I do have some artillery support. I'm going to take it. And right there, oh, we get lucky. We get the surrender. So Evola is ours. And that is going to open up a much safer beach. So now the 50th Infantry Division can land. And that's going to help so much. It's going to be real nice. The Italian units are going to be shocked next turn. 5th Division, I can push up a little bit too. And right here, we are very close to Syracuse, and we have a nice little base camp. It's a good start to the campaign. You'll notice in the top right, right now we're only getting 50% of supplies, but as the game goes on to represent the Allied logistics getting better and the sea lanes getting cleared up and the Luftwaffe um, being less active, that number will change, and so it'll go up to 75 in a couple turns. For those artillery and support units, they are represented on field, and there is zone of control, but you got to really be careful at the scale of this game. It is easy for enemy units to sneak by and to take out support chits. And if you have like an anti-air unit that you don't think is super useful, I don't get the surrender, but I do some damage, knock them back. I'll take that result. But if you have units, even if you think they're not super important, if the enemy sneaks by and kills them, then you're just surrendering victory points for no reason. I'm going to play some air interdiction so that if any Italian units do wake up, they're not going to be able to move as easily and not get supplied as well. And that should hopefully protect me while I take about another turn to cement my initial... And I'm trying to get as many roads as possible. Cement my dish like initial, excuse me, beaches. But good landing so far, not very contested. I'm going to click this button, which just makes the enemy move right up until attacks. And there are no attacks. So we have a good beachhead. Some Italian units are starting to show up. But I think in the next turn, we will be able to meet them and start establishing our bridgeheads. Thank you guys for watching. There's going to be a lot of turns coming up for this real soon. And if you learned something or liked what you saw, please feel free to leave a comment, like, or subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.